You're watching Telecom TV's exclusive video coverage of the Gen 15 event from Dallas. And I'm joined now by Scott Sumner, who is VP Solutions Development with Acedian Networks. Okay. Scott, thanks for talking to Telecom TV. <laughs> thanks for having me here. Can I ask, first of all, what are some of the ways that a telco can really enhance their carry Ethernet 2.0 services? Well, I guess, yeah, these days uh, there's a lot of commoditization in terms of the pipe itself, right? Mm -hmm. Things are getting uh, very competitive on cost. Mm -hmm. And carrier Ethernet can really be the lifeline to the cloud, whether it's a public or a private cloud, uh, all the infrastructure is sort of moving into that kind of uh, cloud compute. But that's, that's really just not enough just to have a service itself. It's, uh, mm -hmm. If it's a lifeline, if it's properly assured, if it's a true carrier Ethernet service, you could layer a lot of managed services on top, you right. could drive revenue, you can offer some innovative techniques like dynamic bandwidth, uh, application aware routing. You could uh, imagine things like packet brokering where you actually sell the customer's information back to themselves to do diagnostics. There's a lot of opportunities once you have a, a fully assured pipe in there. So it gives you a, a, a good platform which to build on top of. Well, that's, that's what the carriers have to do is really find uh, what needs to be positioned and sold over those, and that's where the VCPE comes in because it gives them a lot of flexibility into uh, what they can offer, even if they don't really know yet what that next killer app's going to be. In terms of NFV, we're seeing um, virtualized CPE as, as uh, one of the early wins, if you like. Um, why, why are VCPEs becoming popular now, and why are we starting to see more of them? Well, I think it's probably one of the easiest things to do, right? At the edge, there's less damage to happen. Also, it's a very expensive area for equipment, uh, typically very difficult to maintain. Upgrades require truck rolls as opposed to anything that's in the core or in a central data center, so uh, that's certainly one case. And the other is that if you prepare your edge properly, uh, this allows you to move towards more agile and more dynamic services uh, in the future. So it's a place you want to sort of build a foundation for uh, service delivery. So given that it was an expensive area on the original model, how do you go about deploying vCPE now? Well, for sure one thing you don't do is uh, replace all your equipment on site with more equipment on site, mm -hmm. right? We see a lot of movement towards uh, strange migrations. Let's say, instead of making a clean break towards software and a very simple service edge demarcation, mm -hmm. people mashing x86 compute into uh, routers and things that were already there. So we're getting uh, into an age of uh, confusion in between you know, where, where we want to go in terms of NFV, how to deploy it, and uh, what's possible. So I think what carriers have to do is remember uh, the end goal here is to simplify, right? drive out cost, and uh, make it much more manageable remotely. So uh, you have to start with a, a good edge play. So when you come to deploy your virtualized network functions, do you target the data center or do you target the customer premise? That's again uh, another, another question about ideals and mm. you know, do we remember what NFV is, right? Mm. If you're going to host it on site, uh, you're going to end up with a function on an x86 that probably performed much worse than, you know, let's say, a hardware-based firewall did before that. And a lot of service providers I've talked to here, uh, Comcast, Colt, uh, telling me that all the virtual versions are not only uh, more complicated, they work, they work uh, in inferior ways, but also uh, cost significantly more because of licensing, right? So we have to be careful that we're not going into an age of diluted performance uh, at an increased cost. Does it really matter now whether or not we use private cloud or public cloud for our connectivity? I think it does to the operator in terms of VNFs. If, if you're talking about uh, enterprise, they can probably find the right mix. But uh, when we were at the conference, uh, the SDN World Congress in Dusseldorf, a number of operators, including Vodafone and Colt, had said they'd, they'd failed after the last year trying to deploy VNFs because of the clouds that they sold to their customers, they used them for their own virtual network functions, they just couldn't stand up to the performance load. Mm. So now they're re-architecting data center to make specific ones just for service provider VNFs. And that involves things like the uh, you know, open compute platform that Facebook has started up where you have a lot, lot more granularity in terms of the performance of the platforms themselves. And how is Accedian helping? What are you doing to, to help the situation? In a way, we've also been part of virtualization. We've virtualized mm -hmm. our own network interface devices mm -hmm. down to uh, very small hardware modules that retain performance at the edge mm -hmm. uh, and provide visibility as to uh, turning up a service, what's happening while it's running, uh, dynamically changing it. And that allows uh, the edge to be simplified to the minimum piece of hardware possible and all the rest can be taken away, essentially. Final question for you. Um, we're seeing a move towards more open solutions in, in this industry, um, especially with SDN and NFV. But what exactly does open mean? <laughs> I think academically we know what it means, right? Mm -hmm. It should be something that you can uh, replace uh, any, any component with another one quite easily and, and micro-segment down your applications. But in practice, we're seeing a lot of the larger vendors uh, 
rushing to help sort of service providers trying to establish something like an SD-WAN that they can really only do as an overlay with proprietary solutions today. So I think the open movement, uh, which will be the new standards, is probably going to take a few more years to come along. Great. Scott, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.